What's going on guys? Andrew here with another episode of East Coast Tech. Now, do I have a story for you? So, you may or may have not have noticed uh, that the week prior to my Masterbox 5 video, I did not upload a video at all. Now, it wasn't that I didn't want to. Um, I was already in the process of making the Masterbox 5 video until tragedy struck during the build process. Now, a long time ago, I cosmetically broke the SATA data connector on my 5TB Toshiba X300 hard drive, and uh, I shoved the broken piece into a SATA cable and glued it to the hard drive, and, and it worked fine for months, until I removed it from Chroma. <sighs> uh, the cable came undone, and I replaced it like I had done before, however, it would not show up in Windows. Um, upon further inspection, there were half broken pins on the hard drive and I seemed out of ideas. Now this hard drive has some of my important data like financial documents, so as you can tell I was kind of stressing about this. In my attempts to fix it, I tried soldering a SATA cable directly to the pins on the hard drive. Um, when that didn't work, I even tried soldering the SATA cable directly to the PCB um, on the hard drive's controller board, uh, obviously to no avail. So after some serious thinking and soul searching, I decided that I needed a storage solution that was going to provide me security and peace of mind in the case of catastrophic failure, like the kind I was currently experiencing. At this point, I was considering a NAS, Network Attached Storage, something that I could set up easily and it would allow for redundancy and could double as a Plex and file server for the rest of my house. I was also looking to store backups of my existing boot drives and certain local folders as well. So I began putting together a parts list for my NAS or Network Attached Storage and I settled on these. First up are my storage drives of choice. I went with Seagate's new Iron Wolf NAS hard drives. Um, these are similarly spec to the ever popular WD Red drives, often used for NAS enclosures and the like, although the Iron Wolves do spin a bit faster. I added a 256GB SSD from Mushkin for caching and a 32GB flash drive from SanDisk. Now this flash drive may be an odd inclusion, but it goes in line with the operating system I will be using, FreeNAS. I went with FreeNAS because, well, it's free. Um, another solution would have been Unraid from LimeTech, but my needs aren't so are so minuscule in comparison to what you could do with Unraid that I decided against it. My mini ITX rig makes an appearance again as I will be repurposing parts from the old machine for use in my NAS. To recap, we're using an Intel 4690K. 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX memory, and a Gigabyte Z97M Gaming 5. I also picked up a cheap, non-modular 500 watt power supply from EVGA, since this machine won't be using very much power at all. Honestly, even 500 watts is overkill for this machine, but I'd like to keep it as efficient as possible, and having such a small load against uh, a plenty of headroom and a power supply can do just that. Lastly is my case of choice. I went with the ever popular Fractal Design Note 304. Um, there really isn't an ITX case on the market right now with support for up to six, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives and support for an ATX power supply. There are decent options, however, if you go with a larger case or a larger motherboard form factor, but this is most, this is what definitely most suits my needs right now. So without further ado, how about that build time lapse?
Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you hated it, dislike it. If you want to purchase any of the products featured in this video, there will be links in the video description. Again, this was Andrew with East Coast Tech, and I'll see you next time.